but as a promoter of connection between us in any and every way I know how to do that. Um, and uh, I, it, it's hard to get, I, I can get some form of feedback. I've learned to be a connoisseur of a glazed look in people, so I'll try not to be boring. And I know I have 15 minutes, which I think I'm going to make a little shorter, because uh, I want to talk, first of all, about uh, Virginia, that Virginia, uh, and I, as I look around, I see these wonderful faces of people where I, I, I have to say this, so I don't want to get distracted that uh, people I've had deep experiences with, people I love and have, uh, and, and, and new people. Uh, and I, this is a joining. I don't know if we've done this before, but this is a joining of I Learn, <clears throat> Virginia, put together for, uh, uh, and with her 250 closest friends, I think in the beginning, was uh, in 1969, and I started in 1979, and uh, never left. And uh, Satir Global, which I remember started in a certain way, Virginia had Avanta, and I, I the groups were very separate. So this is a, uh, it, if it's not the first, it's another special occasion for people, for all of us to be together. And I want to say a moment of who is Virginia. And first Virginia, to me, um, the, uh, is, uh, uh, I just remember several things. I remember one thing, when I first met her, she, uh, cured me of my phobia of public speaking. And everybody has a Virginia story. And so I'll tell a very quick one and I won't tell it completely because it has kind of a, uh, it has an ending I'll tell some other time. But the beginning was that she said, does anybody have a problem? This was in 1980. Uh, oh, geez, 70 something. And it was in, in uh, in Canada, and she uh, uh, invited us to to uh, say our, our 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 need for help. So I was going to do a, my first presentation. Uh, it was a presentation at Yale on humanistic psychology, and uh, I was terrified. And there were about a hundred people in this room, and she, uh, well, I'd known her for a while, and all, I had this experience where where she asked me to come up because nobody volunteered, and uh, she said, "How do you feel?" And I said, "Scared." And why? She said, "Well, I'm, this is just what I can't stand. This is what I'm terrified of talking in front of people." And she said, and I'd been a stutterer and so on and so forth. And so she said, just a minute, stop talking. And I stopped talking and she put her arm around me. And Virginia was about, I don't know how, I'm, I'm about five, four in, uh, in, in uh, shoes. <laughs> and she's about, I don't know how tall. And she put her arm around me and I was about chest high, if you can imagine. And she said, I've loved you for a number of years. And I want you to look out at the people. At what, and she said, oh, first she asked me, what did I see? And I said, oh, indifference and uh, so on and so forth. And she's, I said, they look friendly. And this for me presented uh, us, an experience of what happens in support and in the feeling that I could learn in the context of love. And I'm kind of a refugee from psychoanalysis. So we're, as you know, 
the patient is on the couch and the analyst is behind the patient. And this was so full of contact. And I don't know what it was, but I lost my fear. Of course, I know what it was. I don't know the mechanism. I don't know what happened in my brain. I don't know what it was exactly, but I know it was simply an experience of the connection and support. And I gave a talk for about 15 minutes on how I was born. And it was just, uh, had people were laughing and it was funny and uh, everybody was cracking up. I don't remember what I said, but um, it was, uh, it just came from nowhere. So uh, spontaneity is something that I feel is I've learned and I've learned so many things here. And I asked Virginia, we all have Virginia quotes. And my quote, I asked her, how do you convey the kind of wisdom that you have and who, how did you get it all? Because I wanted some of it. And she said, I am everyone you admire. And that was the, <laughs> I took that with me because Virginia was all the thinking, embodied all the thinking and the feeling of people who I had admired. Eric Fromm, and uh, I'll drop some names, Fritz Perls, uh, um, Freud, uh, and in that, uh, in that, and so many, and, and uh, I want to mention today Martin Buber, because today's Passover, I don't want to miss that. And the uh, Passover is a very special experience and holiday that I remember the other thing about funny was about Virginia is that she she told me uh, uh, once over dinner that uh, she was part Jewish. And I don't know where that came from, but she, she said it, so that was that. And uh, um, I, I, was, uh, I, I was struck very often by how much the writings of people that were regarded as theory, Freudian theory, so on and so forth, that I had grown up with, really had to be embodied in what we do, in how we relate to people. And so I think that Virginia modeled was what I call communicative intimacy. It was a way of being where you experience yourself in the context of the other, where you experience who you are and you provide for the other person. I guess I'm talking about psychotherapy, but I just think psychotherapy is not mysterious. Psychotherapy is a, uh, is life in the sense, is the way we should be with each other. Not to work on each other and to manage each other and to say, well, this is, I know more about your mind than you do, because I don't. And Buber is the person I want to talk to now, was the, if you, I don't know how many you can raise your hands or wave or something if you know Martin Buber's name or words. Buber said, that's good, I need contact. I'm also a, not only a connoisseur of contact, I'm a contact freak. So if you just wave to me occasionally, I'd like to see, I see people smiling and looking at me and that's, uh, uh, that's great. <laughs> Buber said, I and thou. And he was a chassid and when you think of chassid, sometimes you think of people, I don't have a very religious background, you think of people with black hats, 
and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, of course, they do have black hats. But Buber had a history, and the 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 history that he related to was the Baal Shem Tov, who was a Jewish rabbi and scholar uh, in the 12th century. And he had a very clear view, which I think transcends Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity. It was that in, I guess in Buddhism, we're all manifestations of God in Christianity and Judaism, God is outside of us. But God, according to the Baal Shem Tov and according to Buber, makes each one of us to have a special being that is an expression of God's work. And you, and in keeping with Sharon's wonderful meditation, you are unique. Virginia stressed uniqueness. You are your own unique manifestation of beauty and of nature. And that there's never been anyone like you. I'm sorry, there has never been another you. There are many of us like you. That's not what I mean. There's no one in, on this earth who is you besides you. There is no one on this earth who is me besides me. And there never has been. In Buddhism, you are a manifestation of God. In Judaism, it's the same thing. And Christianity, if you think about it, and I think the wisdom of Jesus and Buddha and all, I'm speaking about this because of Passover, I'm not a very experienced rabbi, but the, the, the way of thinking and feeling is that we're unique and our expression of ourselves, according to Buber and the Baal Shem Tov, is if you can experience and express yourself fully, you're doing God's work. And this is Passover. Now, I think Passover means much more than freedom. I think it's a holiday of family and community connection. It's not happening except remotely these days. If there's, if uh, I have a very large family, I want to acknowledge my, I invited my son Tim to come to this meeting. And thank you, Tim. I see your beautiful face. And that um, there's a paradox that we're living now. That's a very painful paradox to me. That at the same time that we're group animals and we grew up throughout the, our primitive backgrounds, needing and wanting and having contact. It's, it's each other that saved the human race. It's each other that saved our humanity. It's our being together in wherever we were, in caves and, and forests, and where we paid attention to each other and connected with each other because we didn't have what the animals had. We didn't have the, the, the fur and the claws and the fight. We, we joined each other and we were connected to each other. And it's our connection in this, I think, potentially tragic time that really is threatened. And it's our connection that also gives us tremendous capacity for joy and for being with each other in a way that we can face this one and we can face anything. And uh, this holiday is, uh, uh, it, it means a lot it, besides freedom. It actually means rebirth. It's, it, it's a form, and no Easter's rebirth and resurrection. This is, you know, coming into another land. And people say, the, oh, the world will never be the way it 
used to be. It's never going to be the same. Well, it's never the same anyway. It was never the same after World War II. It was never the same after so many cataclysms. And we need to deal and to face and to enjoy and to the, the light motif the music, the light motif, the theme that goes through everything is our connection with each other and how we connect. And the theme of this group here, our wonderful group that we have, is that I think we carry a, an embodiment, the way Virginia said she, she had all the psychologists and all the thinkers inside her. She wanted to express that wisdom. We have it inside us. We have it there to nourish us and to connect with others because what we have is our hearts, our appreciation for each other, our, our deep connection. And I see uh, Kim, who I don't know, nodding your head. And, and we have that, that deep feeling that we belong to each other and that's what's going to help us through this tragedy and through this potential for joy and connection because we can laugh we can connect however we do it and I, I want to tell you I washed my hands this morning so it gave me a joyful moment that I could touch my face with abandon and uh, I could do it without guilt and shame and and I involve everybody to touch your face for a moment if you did wash your hands and I would like to do something there's so much, I, I'm, uh, Barbara, my wife once said that I was lecturous, so I'm going to stop lecturing, and, and, and I want to, I, 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 I want to, um, uh, begin to turn adversity to opportunity, and I want to say something we have, because we also, I, I've seen people make glancing contact all the time. Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm not, I don't feel great. Goodbye. Or um, this is a rough day or this is a good day. Or the other is to hug and yeah, we, we hug each other. We feel very good. But this is an opportunity to use our words and give each other our reflections and to give ourselves our reflections of our experience. So that's what I have in mind for today. What I have in mind for today is to, uh, well, this is, well, I, I want to offer this before the breakout groups. I would like, I understand, I don't know if this is true, Esther, but it, I, I have a feeling that we can't, I, I, I see four, five, 10, 15, 25 people. I don't know how many there are and uh, of us, but I only, I, so, so we see a, a random sample. I would like to, each of us, for each of us to pick someone here in our gallery. Can you all see somebody? Say yes, yes, yes. Pick someone. And normally I ask people in a group, to pay attention to the other and to have an experience of what it feels like to look at that other person's face. Not through the eyes of judgment, not through the eyes of glancing contact, but to really look. And I would like you each I'd like us each to pick someone. And of course, that person will not be probably looking at you because we can't do that in this situation, but we can do it. I see Eva's face. I see, I, I, I see Judy. I see Daria. I see Tim. I see Gregory. I see people I know. And I see people I don't know. I see Hannah. Hello, Anne. I see, I see Roger. I see Sherry. People I don't know. Hello, Bob. I, I see so many people I know and love. 
and that's about Aloha Del, uh, Del your dark, but I see that he's shining there from Hawaii. And I, I would like you to pick someone who will connect to you in your imagination. And maybe you can really make a connection and only their face for a few minutes to pay attention to your experience as you look at this face. I don't know what it's like because I've never done this before, <laughs> but if you take, take this time and be silent and pay attention to your body as you choose someone, glance around, look around, and choose someone who is of interest to you, who you know or don't know, that kind of narrows it down, and you look at each other and find one place to settle where I want to look at this person's face. I'm very interested and be quiet and connect as though you were in the same room, as though you could see them and touch them. And the way you touched your own face in our meditation, to touch that person telepathically and touch yourself as you look, as you see and allow yourself more than a glancing contact. And I will keep quiet and do the same thing with you. So look around and then stop and land and experience yourself. Maybe it's enough to look around and feel the faces of everyone. But let your experience deepen as you take more than a minute more than a second to take in what you see. Maybe it's best thinking just out loud here to not choose one, but to choose each other, to take a look around and feel the presence of ourselves. That feels much better to experience us as community is to face and face to face. I wonder if we can unmute for a minute and unmute yourself, 
if you have something to say. But I would say for myself, I felt myself change. I couldn't help it. I said this is for everybody, but I felt a responsibility to do something. I shifted into connection. If anybody wants to say something, take a minute here and then we can go back because we're going to have breakout groups and I want to tell you the way I th I'd like to do that. Hi, this is Cynthia. Um, I was um, looking at Daria because she was right beside me on my screen. And I felt this deep connection <laughs> that brought tears to my eyes. And um, it was very powerful. So I thank you for that, that I live by myself. So thank you for that beautiful experience. And Daria, for your beautiful, your beautiful person. Thank you. Hi, this is Maggie. I um I chose actually Gabrielle Galassi. <laughs> and you know I found myself smiling a lot at you, Gabrielle. So um I this was a really interesting exercise for me. And it actually did feel like he was right here, like we were just hanging out. And I thought, oh my God, is it cold over there? He looks cold. We could probably have tea. I mean, that was super easy. So I feel like I've met a new person. So Gabriel, thank you for letting me watch you. <laughs> well, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. I just got lost. Can people hear me? Yes. I can't see anybody, so I have to get back on. You're on. Just check your view. I, I lost my image. I'm so sorry. Hi, this is Mary Jo Bobrook. I'm, I'm in Durham, North Carolina, and I actually was focusing on looking at all the people I knew from the first Avanta Network held in Park City, Utah. For me, it brought back so many memories of our planning and our organization and our time together. And then I looked at actually each person here as well, because I thought, I want to know all the new people, in addition to the folks that I originally worked with. And so I pulled off uh, I have sitting here in front of me a picture some of you may recognize who were there. There's a Virginia and I, a younger version of that. Some of the people that you might remember seeing. And here's another one. I have it on my desk all the time and these were taken in the 1970s. So you can imagine that's a long time ago, right? <laughs> So I wanted to let you know, I'm going to be starting Circles of Love Focus Meditations this uh, Saturday as a special tribute to uniting people worldwide and finding support and help for the coronavirus uh, pandemic. And I'm going to be using what our wonderful colleague Jean talked about last week, peace within, peace between, and peace among. So that's going to be some of the main focus of uh, the work that I will be covering. And of course, it's totally supported by the influence Virginia had in my life. And with that, that I have shared worthwhile, worldwide. So um, I'll put uh, the notice up in the chat page in case any of you would love to come. It's also going to be on the Global Healing Network for free. but. Uh, uh, I want to say how much I have enjoyed seeing each of you, the newcomers, and thank you, Howard, for sharing your wisdom. And I probably will quote some of the things you said because I made some notes because I can put it, okay, this is what the 
Satir community is talking about in 2020. I've missed hanging out with you guys, and so it's fun for me to reconnect. So thank you. Well, thank you, Mary Jo. Sometimes I don't listen to what I'm saying, so I'd appreciate it if you'd let me know. <laughs> Um, I, I'd like to, I, I, I'm back, so I, I've been getting calls and I, I, now I know what to do if I get calls. But uh, um, I, I, I was thinking of, um, uh, Cynthia, you, you were saying you live alone. M many of us do, I don't. Um, and. Uh, uh, Maybe it's not the moment, but uh, it occurred to me as I was watching, I was getting sad that uh, one of my heroes died, uh, John Prine. Have you ever heard of him? You did. So John Prine uh, was a, uh, I think he was an, uh, one of the great poets of the 20th century. And uh, uh, he had the coronavirus and he was challenged because he had lung cancer and, uh, uh, and he was older. But I remembered a song, I remember the verses of a song. And, uh, and it's, uh, I don't know if I could sing it, but it's, it's old trees just go stronger and rivers grow wider every day, but old people, they just grow lonesome, waiting for someone to say hello in there, hello. And it was, a, it was something that was not true only for old people. Uh, you know, every time I get sad, I get happy because I think about it's true for all of us now that we're all in it alone in here. And that's the paradox. Uh, it occurred to me also that it was recognized by the new leader of the free world. You know who that is? I think it's Angela Merkel. And uh, I think she, she noticed, she said to the German people in an address that, um, in at times of isolation, at times when it's necessary to make contact. And I thought, this is a leader? This is someone who really is saying something to the people that is so important to hear, that is so important that the, uh, of the, the, the need to make contact. And that this group, again, I just want to say it again, because you can't say the truth too often. It just embodies that. So in that spirit, I think we're going to break up into, right, Esther? We, we should do that. And, and I, I have a, a thought. I would like you to continue this experience by, in your small groups, we're going to break up into foursomes, and, what I'm aiming uh, for. Sorry? That's what I'm aiming for, but Zoom and will do okay, what we'll Zoom wants it. And if they to have do. Five or three or two, it doesn't matter. It takes some time to talk about your experience of what has been happening in the past three weeks, because in many ways things have slowed down. And let's it could be anything. It could be your experience of the Passover, your experience of, of what's happened in the last three weeks of isolation. And talk to each other. And then I'd like to come back because you will all have done this paradoxical thing, made a, come, made a uh, connection and we'll talk about it further. Is that okay? Everybody okay with that? Okay, well, I don't see any glazed looks. I just see people nodding heads, so cool. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs>